Hello everyone, how are you guys doing? Hopefully you guys are having a wonderful day and today we are here with a range alchemical hydra guide and my endless adventure to make as many guides as possible. Hopefully you guys enjoy, if you do make sure to leave a like, helps the video a ton. With that said, let's go ahead and get on into it. So to start, should you kill hydra? That answer is very easy and that is a yes. First off, it's amazing profit in terms of GP per hour, you can make three to four mil. So I mean, being able to do that while on a slayer task is incredible and with that it is great XP, not necessarily like meta XP per hour, but it's great in the sense that you're getting XP for doing what is already meta money anyways. So it's just like added on XP and really it racks up pretty quick by the end of a task. As far as the requirements, you're going to need 95 Slayer to be able to kill Hydra in the first place. And you'll also need 40 Prayer. In addition to that, you will have to have gotten this task from Konar. But if you already have this task, then you know that. The hourly rates, you can get about 30k Slayer XP per hour, 120k ranging XP, and 4 mil GP per hour. This might be a little bit on the higher end. Of course, you can get a good bit lower, but ultimately, it's amazing XP per hour and GP per hour. So Hydra is weak to range and mange. As I mentioned, this is going to be a range only guide. Hydra's attack style is going to be magic and range based, and the max hit is a 52. It will also poison you from time to time, but we'll have antidotes for that. As far as what you can expect to loot wise, the main attraction here is the Hydra Claw. That is a one in a thousand drop. If you add that with a Zamoraki and Hosta, then you'll be able to make a Dragon Hunter Lance. There's also the Hydra Leather at one in 512 that is used on Barrow's Gloves for best in slot melee gloves. And then you have Hydra Ring Pieces that are dropped at a one in 180 rate. When you combine the three ring pieces, it gives you a Brimstone Ring. You'll get ring pieces in a particular order, so you can't get duplicates of them. Elite Clues are a 1 in 256 drop, and the Hydra Pet is a 1 in 3000. Overall, you'll net about 193k per kill. So nearing 200k, it's pretty ridiculous. For the range gear here, there are three different options on the left-hand side, more of the med level setup as we move on to the right-hand side where there's the maxed out setup. Essentially what you'll notice across all of these different setups is I'm trying to go for a lot of prayer bonus and some good ranging bonus. That's going to be the main thing that you're gonna to wanna to look out for. At Hydra, you won't be taking much damage if you're operating correctly throughout the kill. So really it's more of a question of how long can you stay with prayer rather than how long can you stay with food. So that's why we're looking for prayer bonuses there. For the weapons listed, I have the blowpipe, dragon on a crossbow, and the twisted bow. You could also bring a bow of Fardinen along with crystal armor. Really up to you in terms of what you want to go with. Any of these setups work, and of course you can mix and match across different setups depending on what you have. For the inventory, here are two different ones, essentially with the same items. It's just a difference on if you're going to bring a ton of prayer potions or if you're going to bring a ton of food. Early on, whenever you're learning this, you should probably prioritize food. But as you start to realize that you're running out of prayer potions sooner, then you're going to want to add some prayer potions and bring a little bit more. You'll get a feel for that over time and be able to balance that yourself, but that's really up to you. There's a couple other things that you'll have to look out for here. The first is High Alks. You can go about just bringing runes in a rune pouch, or you could bring an Explorer's Ring 4 that also has daily High Alks that it uses. You'll be getting a lot of alkable drops, so that will be important. Beyond that, you'll be getting a lot of Hydra bones as well, so at that point, you really have to decide what you want to do with them. Me as an Iron Man, I bank every single one I get, and I just have shorter trips. You could bring a Bone Crusher necklace. You could bring a sinister offering which is a spell off the arceus spellbook that uses bloods and wrath runes that gives you prayer xp for the bones that you're getting better prayer xp than just a bone crusher necklace and then you also have the bone crusher the difference between the bone crusher necklace and the bone crusher is that the necklace will give you prayer points boosted whenever you bury them so decide what you want to do in terms of the high alks and hydra bones everyone has their different preferences but that's what you're going to want to note for your inventory so now let's go ahead and talk about how to get there in the kill process. So if you have the current Elite Diaries done, you'll have the Rada's Blessing 4, and you can go ahead and teleport to Mount Kurulum. Most people probably don't have that, and if you don't, then the best way to get here is either going to be the Fairy Ring Code CIR, or a teleport to the Battlefront right down here, and then just run up here to the north. There's two agility obstacles at this point of the game. You should be able to manage those easily. Once you're up here, then you'll have to make your way on over here to this elevator. One thing of note, you will have to have either Either boots of stone, brimstone boots, or the Karend Elite Diaries done to be able to come down here. If you don't bring those things, the ground beneath you will hurt you and that is going to be problematic. If you have 88 agility or 83 and a summer pie, you can go ahead and go on through this mysterious pipe and it will take you over towards Hydra. If you don't have that, then you'll want to walk on over these rocks to the north and run on by these Hydras up here. These are small little ones, not the boss, so you can just pass on by them. Pray mage, and uh, yeah, if it's a, a, an attack like that, it's a mage-based attack. We'll talk more about that here in a second. So before we can get into Hydra, we have to talk about some of the uh, basic principles for this boss fight. The first 
thing of note for Hydra whenever you look at the room is that there are three different vents of different colors and essentially these are utilized by luring Hydra over top of them. Whenever Hydra gets hit by them, he will make this kind of roaring sound. That way you know that his defense has been lowered and you'll have to do this for the first three of the four phases for the boss to be able to adequately deal damage to it. The green phase will be lured over the red vent, the blue phase will be lured over the green vent, and the red phase will be lured over the blue vent before finally the black phase doesn't have to be lured over anything. Do not lure the same colored hydra over the same colored vent. If you do that, it will start absolutely destroying you and hitting double what it normally hits. There's four phases of Hydra. It goes green, blue, red, and then black. Each phase has its own ability. This ability will be used on the fourth attack of each phase. So once it turns into a new color, its fourth attack will be some sort of strange thing depending on which phase it is. Also, you can easily pray against Hydra because whenever it attacks with Ranger Mage, it will attack consecutively three times with the same style before then switching to the other style and then just going back and forth between mage and range so you know exactly the pattern that you're going to see and it will also swing its head to indicate that it is changing style so even if you aren't counting then you'll note that it does help to count however because if it does change phases while the head is supposed to swing the head won't swing it will just change phases and then it will change attack styles and you wouldn't have seen the head swing also another very helpful tool is going to be the runelite ground markers that I will have linked down below. There's two different paste bin links that you can go to. All you have to do then is go ahead and copy the paste bin and then go ahead and import it into your runelite client via the globe on the right hand side and just right clicking that. So let's go ahead and do an example kill and I'll pause and break down what I'm doing as we go. So to start, let's go ahead, walk on into the Hydra layer. I'm going to pray mage and then change my protection prayer depending on what it attacks with. In this case, it's range. So eventually I realize that. Make sure to also drink your ranging potion and run on over to the first tile. Once the fourth attack comes out, make sure to run to the north so that way you don't get hit by the acid. And essentially at this point, we've lured the green Hydra onto the red spot, which is what we want. Now we want to get him towards the green spot. So that's when I start running from tile number two to tile number five hitting each tile in between and attacking along the way now at this point you're going to need to get hydra down to 825 hp before the blue phase is hit so i just keep changing the prayers depending on if it's swinging its head or not and waiting to get below 825 once that happens then i lure hydra down to the green vent and from there you have three attacks until it does its special attack at which point i'm going to pause now and we can talk about what you're going to do so as you can see i have three tiles marked on the western side of this room near where my mouse is at that is called a lightning skip and i will show that here in a moment what i'm going to demonstrate is the easy easy way of getting away from the lightning which is basically just step on up to the northeast side of this room near the corner there and then once all the lightning is thrown out across the room just start to run westward and if you run all the way to the west the lightning will not catch up to you and you'll be able to attack hydra along the way not get hit and you'll be good to go if you do get hit by the lightning, it's not going to be the end of the world. Essentially, you just get frozen for a second, and then you also get hit for a small amount of damage. Maybe two of them hit you, but it's not going to kill you or anything. Once the red phase is ready, then we're going to have to make our way down to tile number 11, as we'll do right now. So I run on down there. It gets hit by the blue vent, which is what we're looking for, and it will attack us three times before going into its special attack, which is the flames. So I keep getting closer because I'm going to have to make my way to the southeast right here at tile number 14. So pause again. The Hydra is now going to spit out a ton of different flames. It's going to basically enclose you in a certain area and then it's going to throw a flame at you. And this flame will follow you around the room at which point then you have to get away from it. However, I'm going to demonstrate what is here, a flame skip, which is where once you see Hydra swing back its head to spit at you, you run to tile number 15 and as we'll see here, nothing will happen. So it rears its head back, I walk over and boom, nothing happens. Now, if I move from here, the flames will come out and start to follow me. So do not move, stay still. Now, I've gotten Hydra down below 275 HP. We're going to go into the final phase, which is the Black Hydra. And at this point, it is going to attack you with the opposite prayer of whatever you were last hit with by the red phase. So in this example, as you can see, the last hit from the red phase on me was a ranged attack. So I'm going to have to pray mage for the first attack in this Hydra. 
the Black Hydra will alternate every single attack, so be weary of that. And it has a fourth attack that is an acid splash that it will throw at you, at which point you don't have to alternate for that one because it is an acid based attack. So first hit comes on in, it's going to be a mage attack as you can see. Then we pray range, then we pray mage. So I pray range preemptively not to get hit on the next hit. So I'm ready to go for the fifth hit. And now you just get back into that rhythm of changing every other time. It's really that easy. 10 hits after the initial poison, there will be another poison thrown. So keep an eye out for that. Usually it's just kind of like a gut feel for me. So whenever I get really long into this part of the kill, when I notice there hasn't been a poison thrown in a while, I'll just start running around kind of as a preemptive measure. If you do get hit, worst it's going to do is a 10. You just drink up on your anti-poison and you're good to go anyways. Not too big of a deal. But just like that, you've gotten your first Hydra kill. So at that point, once you get done with the kill, go ahead, loot your Hydra. I like to eat up on an anglerfish, open up a little bit of inventory space, and from there, high alk any alkables you get, and also disperse of any bones in whichever way you prefer. At that point, then just go ahead and make your way on over to tile number one, at which point you can start the kill process all over again. Then the real thing that you can add to make Hydra a little quicker and a little bit more challenging is the lightning skip. We talked about the flame skip prior, which is really easy. The lightning skip's a little bit harder. So basically lure the blue hydra on over the green vent it'll roar that way you know that you're good to go at that point then before the fourth hit comes out make your way on over to the western area as we have mentioned prior as you'll see there there's a seven eight and nine stand on seven and the lightning will come out once the lightning is a tile away from the spot number eight go ahead and click on it and then click on number nine quickly after if you do that basically the lightning will be stuck under you and won't be dealing you any damage if you do move out of that spot, however, it will deal you damage, so do not do that. But if you do that, basically you won't have to run around as much whenever the lightning comes out, and it's just kind of cool and easy to accomplish once you start to get the feel for it. So that is going to be it for this guide. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure to leave a like. In addition to that, if you want some more videos like this, as soon as you go live, make sure to subscribe. Also, I have a clan chat, Discord, Twitch, tons of different places you can interact with myself and the community at down below in the description. Would appreciate it greatly. But with that said, hopefully you have a wonderful day, and uh, peace. Also, little Easter egg, this wheel doesn't spin completely.